Hello everyone and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. Today we are reviewing the micro series Rainbow Dash comic, uh, written by Ryan K. Lindsay, uh, with art by Tony Flix and edited by Bobby Curno. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hello guys. And Silver Quill. Janky's best pet. <laughs> <laughs> And in this comic, more than ever, actually. Oh, yep. He has such great moments. Okay, we are digressing already. Oh, my God, <laughs> and we just started. Uh, okay, so, yeah. Um, in the line of the micro-comics, uh, this is the second one. Uh, this one uh, focused around Rainbow Dash and uh, tackling an invasion. Uh, apparently, uh, some evil dark clouds have appeared over Ponyville, and they are threatening with destroying everything and blocking the sun forever. And it's on Rainbow Dash's shoulders to dis uh, to dissolve those clouds and fix the situation. It's the weather pony, after all. And actually, didn't I tell you guys before we were started recording this that we were going to use uh, we're going to have a, a drinking game uh -huh, yep. about how many times I was going to say the word weird. Yep, let me open my drink. Okay, done. because yeah, this is probably, in my opinion, the weirdest of all of the micros. All right, Th the that weirdest. is true. That is true. <laughs> Yeah, the, the weirdest. Uh, it, it's not just because of the setting, because it is really, it, it is really interesting. How I know saying something is weird in a land full of magical color pastel horses <laughs> that can talk, fly, and make magic. I know it's, but it is very weird. I mean, you have these, um, you have these gremlins that control a cloud that blocks the sun and is made out of a substance that is kind of like in impossible to do to destroy mm -hmm. it's like indestructible uh you have newscaster ponies <laughs> making interviews to other pony billions um and it 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 does feel you know it does feel like the whole comic is kind of like an insane a uh, hay fever dream and that's not a bad thing <laughs> that at least on on uh from from my perspective but like always, I'm going to leave my perspective for last. What about you guys? What What did you think of the comic? Unfortunately, this, for me, this is the... If I were to rank all of the uh, micros, this would be second to last. Mm. Uh, which I know sounds very harsh, but I, I feel like the point of a micro is to really celebrate a character for all their faults and strengths. And ironically, this really does celebrate something I think people forget about Rainbow. That she sell that she inspires other ponies. That's kind of her big thing, even more than the whole loyalty spiel. Problem is that this micro does two things that none of the other micros do. One, it has a direct threat to Equestria, the whole of Equestria, not just the individual. Mm -hmm. uh, and two, it is way more overt with the pop culture references. Uh, like you'd say with the newscaster pony, who's obviously like a, a CNN uh, or Weather Channel parody, and you have oh, yeah. little, you have the goth pony. Who oh yeah, I had, to, I had to go online to find out what what is this? What am I not getting here? Turns out there was a figure after this that this character is based on. Oh my! Wait, what? Really? Yeah. Oh my god! I had no idea of oh, that. Oh, link, link, link. Uh, let me. I'll see if I can hunt it up, but. Uh. Basically, I felt like Rainbow got lost in her own comic mm -hmm. that yeah. we we never really – there's the threat throughout this whole comic that she may never fly again, that mm -hmm. she's afraid to push herself because of what might happen, which indeed did tie into the Nightmare Rarity arc we talked about another time. But that never becomes a front issue because it, there are so many pop culture references being shoved in our face. Hmm. That is true. And now that you say that, yeah, I completely see where you're coming because I remember a lot of moments, but most of the moments that I remember are moments that don't start Rainbow Dash. Like I, I remember the the two gremlins looking at this at the at the town, saying, "Ah, we're gonna take uh, take uh, control over this." I remember the newscaster. I just remember the 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 goth pony that you just mentioned, and uh, hell, I remember more of Tank. Than of Rainbow because Tank has that one awesome bro hoof uh, moment in the comic that is it's literally a bro hoof. It says it with big giant yellow letters, bam, bro hoof. Mm. That is absolutely true. The only thing that I remember of Rainbow Dash in the comic is the double Sonic Rainbow that she does at the end. Mm, that is true. 
<laughs> which con- which conjures up fan made animations now. <laughs> right, which guys. yeah. May, may I say that that moment with this double sonic rainbow, uh, what it causes is like it's it's a rainbow. It's a double rainbow to protect all of Ponyville, to save everybody, and uh, it inspires everyone and it creates a, a like a, a, a like a northern light floating all over Ponyville. And I am like, wow, look at that! So. It actually causes something nice. It's not the fallout of Ponyville, like in Double Rainbow. <laughs> My God, <laughs> sorry, but uh, yeah, that that was that was wow. Okay, so okay. besides besides that, uh, what else? Like I I cut you off there completely. Sorry, Silver. Oh no, it's really um, like I say, it's just. Rainbow got preempted, and the big question that here's the challenge when you introduce a threat, like a genuine, it is it is an emotional assault on Equestria. All the other micros were like focused on just the character. It was something important to them, but not necessarily to the world. This is a threat to the world. So, as they say, that months, weeks, and weeks are going by, and everyone's getting more depressed as this cloud hangs over. Where's Celestia? Where are the rest of the main six? Uh, Why? Where are the Wonderbolts who were at the very start of this comic? Why is Rainbow the only one trying to solve this problem that affects everybody? In Ponyville, to be exact, really. So you're basically saying that this micro is is too big even for Rainbow Dash to, to tackle. It's too much of a conflict for her to face. It's too much for her to really shine solo when it almost demands that others be involved. That is true. Then again, there has been other situations uh, bringing back the bringing back the, the the TV show and the official release uh, that they might require the assistance of Princess Celestia, like when Spike grew giant and she only sent the Wonderbolts to take care of the situation. Only three of them. Yeah, she getting, only. She was getting enough of a cure that day. <laughs> Oh my god, she was recovering after the um, celebrations in Canterlot when Ari, when the main six stormed the palace with Twilight's birthday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One episode takes place right after the other, so it kind of makes sense within the continuity. Yeah, I just feel like the conflict was so big in scope that you, ironically, you lose the personal aspect that these micros, the better ones, excel at. Yeah, because... Yeah, you know what? That is true. Because in almost all the micros, if not all of the micros, uh, the character that the, the, the comic is based on, is fo- the character that the comic is following, this character is in almost all of the panels. In the Rainbow Dash micro, Rainbow Dash is barely in it. No, she, she's <laughs> in most of them, but... Yeah, that's the thing. Like, in most of them, but not as much as the others. Like, even in the Applejack one, which I would consider is kind of like my least favorite, uh, of them, Applejack is in every single panel of that comic. Like mm-hmm. it's, it, it, it is a constant, and I completely understand where Silver is coming from. We are talking about Rainbow Dash here, and I, I think what this comic does is really didn't pull. Uh, sorry, um, really didn't bring out um, Rainbow Dash's strong points. Yeah, I agree with that. I I said before that she is great at inspiring ponies, that she'll make speeches or just wow everybody with her uh, athleticism. And that happens. I mean, double rain, boom, like you say, saves the town, not blows it up. (laughs) But at the same time, you don't really get to know her. And some of the scenes, she's just talking gibberish. I I mean, there's this weird line that I just don't get. She falls into Sweet Apple Acres. Uh-huh. And she says, why is this so difficult? It's a cloud, not like I'm fighting a ninja monster made of algebra and tangled wire hangers. <laughs> okay, sorry. Oh my <laughs> god, she does say that. Oh god. Now, simultaneously, that sounds awesome. <laughs> algebra is scary. <laughs> it is. But it's also so random. I'm just thinking, wow, you're you're playing her off as a random dingus? That's my character. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, trademark. <laughs> I don't that's know. Your... Uh, no, but I can totally see. I can totally see that, and I that's that's where I get the disconnect with this. Uh, 
I will write, you know what, I will write this comic as my second, my, my I'll write on the, on the, yeah, I will write it right where you have it, Silver, in the, the, the second least favorite of the, of all the micros. But not because it's bad or because of that, but because it's so weird. And mm-hmm. here we go. Okay, take another shot. But yeah, oh. it is a weird comic, even all the way down to what you just said, uh, the, how Rainbow Dash is words that. And I'm like, that makes absolutely no sense. And that is not a part of the character either. Like, Rainbow Dash is very keen to hyperbole. Actually, every single character in My Little Pony is keen to hyperbole. They love to use it. Uh, and it's something that this fandom lo- loves to abuse every now and then. But it's like there is a point where hyperbole starts getting way too much and where not even within the context, it makes sense. It is a silly uh, comment, true, but it is a very weird, silly comment. I'm looking through this and visuals are really awesome. But I remember giving this a low score when um, when we mentioned about the six micros and Apple Jacks and Rainbow Dash are tied for last place. So I got Stick no with idea. Me. Yep. So, so in my mind, I got no idea what's wrong here. Like visuals are really good, but in terms of story, I, I think I said this before to myself, so I could remember in the future when I need to say this part again. I think the thing that didn't work for me was the lesson. The lesson here was terrible. Was there a lesson? Um... I mean, not in, really sure there was. In, in Good question, micro, because I don't remember the list. Sorry, yeah, I know, but in each micro, you have a develop a character development, a character lesson. So in the first one, it's about Twilight Sparkle helps another pony to be outgoing, friendly, and stuff. And in the rarity micro, it's helping someone to do something in terms of business. And Fluttershy was, well, rarity again, helping her to be more confident, and with Fluttershy herself trying to hide the fact that she was um, talented. And in Pinky's case, was trying to help someone branch out with something he, or doing something he likes. So, with Rainbow Dash, there was practically nothing lesson-worthy or help-worthy, or let's say, advance the character. There is one page, and I'm flipping through it right now, and the, the one page where Rainbow suddenly gets a revelation. He says, I don't have to cheer myself up. I've been looking at this all wrong. This isn't all about me. This isn't about me at all, which is really kind of weird. <laughs> her words. Uh, and I guess it's supposed to be that she stops focusing on herself and thinking that she sh- should be awesome. But mm-hmm. it, again, we don't feel or identify with Rainbow's internal struggle because the scope of this is just too darn big. Mm, true that, true that. I'm trying to really think hard about what made me put this in last place. And all I can think of is the way that Rainbow Dash is doing one thing after another to bust the clouds. Because if you really think about it, this is not a, a job meant for one pony. It's supposed to be an entire crew. And Rainbow Dash herself is in charge of the weather team. So why is not Rainbow Dash asking for help? I think if we want to go to the part where um, lesson-based, this could be a really good book or good uh, comic for Rainbow Dash to learn humility. Yeah, but then again, you do the same thing that they have been doing in the show. And all of a sudden, you see yourself repeating the same pattern that some of the scripts in the show have followed. And you have the problem that the Fluttershy Micro has, which is, again, breaking through her her lack of confidence and... Bam, you have every single generic Fluttershy episode since season one. (laughs) Before they started doing something interesting with this same idea. Uh, (sighs) Honestly, I I, I can see where you guys are coming, but again, it is a very weird comic with a very weird structure and, and and a very weird resolution. Drink. And now I've taken so many shots. (laughs) I'm drunk again. (laughs) <laughs> and they sound like Rocky Balboa. <laughs> Can you start screaming, Adrian, Adrian? <laughs> well, I don't want to star in Rocky IV. <laughs> uh, at least you're not screaming, I am the law. The law. Well, then I, I need more drinks to become even more incoherent. I am the law. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That movie. Uh, I have to but... dislocate my jaw to get more. <laughs> 
<laughs> but, but overall, um, but, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, Keep, okay. go ahead. Oh, yeah. No, let's let's do the overall about mm-hmm. the, the the Rainbow Dash Micro, and um, let's let's go counter uh, like op- opposite to the alphabet. So let's start with silver. Mm-hmm. All righty. Like I say, second second lowest on the uh, on the chart for me. Interesting ideas, and it does and it does show Rainbow's ability to inspire ponies, but. We never really connect with Rainbow, the focus of the comic, mm-hmm. because the scope is simply too big. And as you say, there are a lot of quirky, random comments and very overt, uh, overt pop culture references. I love reading these comics a second time through and spotting the background references. That, uh, Quantum Leap mentions Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I've, I've never watched Fringe, but I know them Fringe ponies are a big part of this. <laughs> yes, Here, yes. In this comic, the the pop references are right there in your face, part of the story. <laughs> the 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 gremlins as they're defeated are screaming, "Oh, it's so intense that glasses do nothing." Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there's no reason to read it again. I get all the references the first time around. Mm-hmm. And if you don't get them, then the story suffers. Whereas if they're background references, you might not get them. They still look fun, but the story doesn't get hurt. Yeah, exactly. When you make the references part of your story, uh, unless you are a very good writer, I'm not saying that Lindsay, K. Lindsay is not a very good writer, but he didn't put the references as well as other writers. Yeah, no subtlety to them. Rainbow whip eyes. I have to bring something up. In your chat, James, Twilight New Luna Republic is saying that uh, she is never in charge of the weather team in the episode. Is she? Yes, she is. In Winter Wrap Up, she is taking care of the weather teams. And on Hurricane Fluttershy, she gathers the uh, the old Pegasi to create a tornado. That is also weather duty. Okay, so I, I thought I was mixing Fennon with um, Cannon. So, all right. Though, for just the weather team, the day-to-day stuff, I don't think we've ever seen other... No, wait, we have seen other ponies handling the weather in Look Before You Sleep. Mm -hmm. That is true. Rainbow was not present there. So we've never seen her work with the weather team directly. We've seen her lead in special events. Mm. I'm pretty sure we have seen her at one point. It should have been on season one. We are forgetting now, but I'm pretty sure we, we have seen her at one point doing that. Well, in the first season when uh, Rain- uh, Twilight Sparkle was finding Rainbow Dash, she found her in the clouds. Well, her job was supposed to bust the clouds, but she said later on because she was lazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> saying something like she was in charge of the weather. Yeah, I mean, could that could be it. Well, uh, eh, who knows? And there was also the Breezies episode where she, Thunder, Lane, and Flitter? I guess so. I think it was Flitter, yeah. Yeah, they, they were moderating the Breeze. But again, special event. Hmm. So it's hard to say. Maybe she's just the go-to pony for a special event. Well, yeah. uh, let's just say this. She has a day job, and that day job is to control the weather. And sleep. <laughs> yes, indeed. And especially sleep. <laughs> yeah. God, how can someone so lazy be so sporty? That makes no sense. That is the only thing that pisses me off. It's like, oh my God, you're a slacker, you're lazy, and yet again, you're the fastest flyer ever. No! Lazy people are not fast. Look at me. I am lazy, and I, I, a snail can win me in a race. Silver, is that uh, your final verdict, or do you have anything else to add? The gremlins were an interesting design, I can't say they really. I really thought, hey, I could see these guys in the show. It's yeah. ironically, it's the clothing, the abundance of clothing, which <laughs> makes me sound like a nudist. <laughs> <laughs> Take your but, clothes off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Liberate yourselves, my impish brothers. <laughs> <laughs> but no, all in all, it's like a good ideas, but the whole point of a micro is to focus on a character, and I'm afraid this struggled from lack of focus. Mm-hmm. True, 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 true. Totally agree, totally agree. So, who's next, James, after the alphabet uh, of... Yours, yours, yours. Oh, me. All right, Ivan. Well, uh, like I said before, this is my lowest tier of out of the main six. But let me see. I thought the story was interesting, but like you guys said, full with 
pop culture reference that make it dated. And I think one thing that bothered me was the art. Because this was the first time that we see Tony Fleece doing um, the comics. So I, I think for me, I was not used to his art style yet. And let's just say that to me, the whole story did not work well with how I felt or thought a micro series comic would have worked. I can see why. Uh, it's, yeah, you know what? Art wise, it is very weird. Drink. Drink. Uh, but it is, it is also narratively speaking why it is so bizarre is that it doesn't follow any structure and it doesn't follow anything that we have seen before. I am all out for innovation and trying new things, but this one definitely didn't work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And James, what about you? What do you think? Well, well, I think you guys pretty much, uh, you were speaking to me in these, in your different final verdicts. It's like, uh, yeah, it is, it is chock full of pop culture references that make no sense, not even in context. Like, why is Applejack carrying a cart with a sign that reads Rainbow We Pies? With a picture of Rainbow Dash, like David Bowie when he did Quadrophenia. Marketing? Yeah, or like, why is there a goth pony? Why is there a, a news team in Ponyville? It's like, it is, but you know, it, that, that's the whole comic. And I think that's why it doesn't bother me that much. Mm-hmm. Like, it is weird, but it doesn't kill me. Uh, just the fact that it starts so weird and it keeps that weirdness going. The fact that it, it, it stays weird from the very beginning. And it uh, it keeps that level of weirdness uh, until the very end. Mm-hmm. It makes it consistent on my end, and it does it does it does depend whether that's a deal breaker for you or not. It's not a deal breaker for me. It doesn't it, it doesn't ruin the comic at all. But it is definitely my second least favorite of all the micros. That's mm-hmm. including not just the main six, but uh, including Celestia's, the Cutie Mark Crusaders, Spike, and Luna's. It is my second least favorite of mm-hmm. uh, of them all, just for the fact that. Uh, consistency. There is no consistency here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, so yeah, not bad, but not spectacular either. Mm-hmm, that's true. I was hoping for something more in the second micro, but you know what? It's the second, and like I always say, give it a three episode chance or a three micro comic chance. And you know what? The third one hit it out of the ballpark really hard, and it made a home run. <laughs> Is rare, rarity saves the series. Mm, yeah. Oh yes. Yep. yep. <laughs> like I, I am so happy that best ponies a micro is best micro. Oh that yes. Is so, that is so good. I. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's 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 fun. and then and then best princess micro just makes it amazing. Mm, mm. Uh, princess Celestia micro is no slouch. Princess Celestia's micro is really heartwarming. Mm-hmm. It's no slouch. Sorry, but the Celestia Micro just a little bit ahead of Luna. Just a little. We are entitled to our own opinions. It kind of threw me off because <laughs> because of Gordon Ramsay pony. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, what the hell? Gordon Ramsay is there, he's a pony, and he's actually swearing. Oh my <laughs> god. Like, you don't read the swear words, but you can see the cannonballs, explosions, and Chinese symbols coming out of his mouth. <sighs> saying, oh my god, this is funny. You know <laughs> what? Uh, let's just save that for another day then. Because yeah, yeah. Um, this is a back-to-back recording of the comic reviews and it's meh. <laughs> we have the same opinions. We like this. We, uh, we think the same. It's very meh. Where's the fighting? <laughs> well, you know, the fandom can fight, but it's not always about the fight. <laughs> True. Actually, to be honest, if everyone agrees on it, then that really says this comic missed the mark. Mm. It did. It did. I mean, there've been so there are there've been far more controversial comics where people are like oh I love this oh I hated it so back and forth, but this one I've I don't know if I've ever heard anyone stick up for this as the best of the micro series. Oh, no, I mean no no yeah. I haven't heard, hell you know what when compared with the last one we reviewed the Twilight Sparkle one mm-hmm. uh, nobody was sticking out for that we are actually the three only people <laughs> in the entire planet that I know of who are sticking out for the. Twilight Sparkle Micro, but the Rainbow Dash Micro, everybody's saying, eh, maybe that's it. You know what? Not even the Rainbow Dash um, elitists are saying this is awesome or this is good. Like, oh, you do not 
talk bad about my pony, you. Yeah, if any, if anything, the, the, the Rainbow Dash fans are kind of like siding with those who didn't like the comic. <laughs> because they're like saying, yeah, Rainbow Dash deserves something better, not this. Mm-hmm. And a very popular podcaster, uh, Chef Sandy from Bronyville, said this. He didn't thought the comic was good. And the next micro converted him. <laughs> Yeah, that is the one thing, is that the people who were not sure if they liked Rainbow Dash as a character or not, uh, with the Rainbow Dash micro, they were, they were completely convinced. They were like, nah, this is, this isn't worth my time. <laughs> but anywho, James, did we do our final verdict, yes? Yeah, well, my final verdict is that simple, is that it is, it is okay, but it is way too weird for me to get into it, and it's difficult to get into it. It, 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 it is ridiculous how needlessly complicated it gets how Rainbow Dash gets pushed into the background and how the, the the story just forgets that it's not about the background characters but the main character and they are like almost consciously ignoring her. Hmm. And a resounding meh rose across the world. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's not good yeah. it's, but it's not yeah. bad. So it's just Imagine good. imagine imagine Obi Wan Kenobi is saying, I felt a disturbance in the bronies <laughs> like a thousand Voices sigh and they just said meh and all that followed was an empty void of forum posts. <laughs> it's like it's something something like that. It's forgettable at the very least. That's that's the the, the worst part is that no. it doesn't leave an impact. It's meh. No, you know, I, I don't agree to that. I said that this micro has its strong points, yes, and the very memorable parts to it was the Sonic double rainbow. So yeah. <laughs> Funny enough, this came out at the same time Double Rainbow was coming yeah. out. Yeah. Timing. Well, you know what? <laughs> I just realized as we're talking, this may actually be the greatest of comics. <laughs> Why? Be- because it united the world <laughs> under one opinion. <laughs> All controversy. Nothing... It doesn't matter your religious belief, your political <laughs> affiliation, your national views, your favorite pony. Across the board, this comic is meh, and the yeah. world agree. Exactly, it's kind of like it's a universal truth. Like you, Ball is a terrible director, or Michael Bay likes <laughs> explosions way too much. It's, it, it is, it is absolutely true. Holy cow! Oh my god! You know what? Now that you now that you say it like that, I am not allowed to hate this comic. This comic is like the UN yes. of the of the yes. comics. It's like it united everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Silver. Oh my god. You deserve a medal. A silver medal. <laughs> Woohoo, suck it, bronze. <laughs> oh, wow. That, that was good. That was good. Oh, man. But, James, <laughs> what would the next review be? The next review, if we are going to follow up with uh, uh, doing one of the main series, one of the main series and one of the micros, the next review is going to be. Uh, the big Macintosh goes for a box of nails into Ponyville Arc, also known as a Sen and the Art of Gazebo Repair, written by Katie Cook and drawn by Andy Price. Probably a, a, a comic so unique and that it has so many things in it that we better wait until <laughs> until we review it. Oh god, like talking about it right now will just get me so hyped and we can just record another one. <laughs> I had to stop myself before I start reviewing it right now with you guys because I I cannot wait to talk about this comic. I, <laughs> I like it so much. I know. <laughs> it's so good. Mm. All right, we'll, we'll go on a review steamroll because then the next micro is rarity. So oh god. Oh my god. Go, yeah, you're right. We go from <laughs> we go from nightmare rarity arc, which was eh, broke even, and rainbow dash micro, which was meh, universal <laughs> meh. To uh, oh my god, art of gazebo! And, <laughs> oh my god, rarity micro! And, oh my god, this is the greatest comics ever! <laughs> and uh, uh, we're, we're kind of like in a, uh, when we get to that, it's going to be like an Andy Price, Katie Cook rampage because it's mm. going to be Sen and the art of gazebo repair. Then it's going to be uh, rarity, rarity micro, and then it's going to be uh, nay everything, the Shannon Armor cadence. Arc. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh god, that was good too. Ah, oh. I. <laughs> I was so happy with how they tackled that one. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh god. Let's end this and wait for another week. <laughs> yes, yes. Let's do <laughs> that. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> okay, so this has been uh, the NBA show reviews at the Rainbow Dash uh, micro series of the official IDW MLP comic books. I have been James Cork. I am Norman Sanzo. And I have been doing the drinking game and can't feel my toes. <laughs> Get yourself on some ice, man. Ice, but not for the drink. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.